Welcome to Plant Pathmakers, unrecognized leaders who are helping change what the world eats, one person, one meal at a time. Today we have with us Ashley, who's graciously given up her lunch hour to come and talk to us today. Uh, and I know Ashley on Instagram under the name, Let's Eat More Plants. I think I have that correct. Let's eat some plants. I'm sorry. Let's eat some plants and underscores between um, each of the words. And I highly recommend all of you who aren't following her to follow her uh, because her meals are creative, delicious, colorful, and yet simple. Uh, and that's the reason I'm particularly drawn because you can see that it's easy to be plant-based. And hopefully Ashley will share with us one of my favorite recipes that she has posted on her site, the cotton candy nice cream. And I've made it a few times um, and it's it's unbelievable and it's just made with fruit. So um, I guess I'm gonna turn the floor over to you, Ashley, then, and um, have you start by just telling us why are you plant-based and what your story is in your journey? Yeah, thanks so much for, uh, for creating this space for us today. Um, so I wrote down a couple little notes. Um, I, in 2009, uh, my first husband, he gave me the book Gorgeously Green for a Valentine's Day present. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I've heard of that. I'm going to write that down. Gorgeously uh, Green. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was uh, a very good book. I think he saw it at Target and it had a sticker on it that said she was on Oprah or something. And the book was not a plant-based book but it talked a lot about sustainable living, um, reducing single use plastic, uh, probably eating a little bit what you would call cleaner meats, um, more of like the grass fed, mm -hmm. uh, organic. It focused a lot on organic produce, just kind of a whole lifestyle thing. Um, talking about, you know, using less paper towels and uh, cleaning with natural products. So I got really into that really fast. I started making a lot of changes to the products we used. I was buying um, more foods at uh, Whole Foods or trying to buy more organic foods and more of the uh, non-antibiotic, you know, humanely raised organic chickens and, and things like that, you know, but I was still eating meat. Um, I always had a pretty uh, adventurous palate. I kind of liked everything. So I was not afraid to try other things. You know, I had, I had eaten veggie hot dogs before just because I thought it was cool to try that. So mm -hmm. um, I was still eating meat, but I was definitely open to trying different things. And um, that same year, I had a coworker who decided to give up meat for Lent. So I said, okay, I'll join you. And during that period, I also read the book, uh, Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Fuller. And he's a great author. Never, never read that one eating either. I, so I'm writing this down. Okay. That's a really good one. Um, it really gets into a lot of the ethical dilemmas, but without maybe going so far as to make you very uncomfortable. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's some stories in there that are kind of heartbreaking, but it's not, it's, it's manageable. Mm -hmm. So I read that. I think I might've picked up one of Kathy Preston's books at the time. I started reading Michael Pollan and um, his, his different ideas. I think he had the omnivores dilemma at that time. Mm -hmm. So I really started getting into the ethical and environmental realities of the food system. And so when that period of Lent was over and, and my coworker and I, we did it. One of the other girls joined us um, and we were, I'm a nurse, we were working in an urgent care. And so, you know, we were taking turns bringing in salads and making different things. And when the, uh, when Lent was over, I said, well, I'm, I'm just gonna continue not eating meat. <laughs> and, um, you know, as the years went on, I just, I really am a voracious reader. I always enjoyed 
uh, educating myself in that way. And honestly, as a nurse, I have always been a little confused why people would go to like a medication mm -hmm. first as the first option. Right. To me, right. I've always believed that um, it's not our nature to be unwell and that there are always a lot of options that always interested me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, my first job in a hospital, I remember some of the nurses saying, you know, how healthy blueberries were. And so I started putting blueberries in a, a smoothie every day. Mm -hmm. So I just really got into um, educating myself more. And, and I felt a passion both for the health reasons, but then, you know, for animal reasons too, and environmental. Right. Um, and as the years have gone by, it's just kind of continued to evolve. Um, in 2017, I read How Not to Die from Dr. Grieger, mm -hmm. and that was definitely a game changer. Um, that was when I really, uh, for probably for the first time, went fully plant-based um, for, for quite a while. And I, I don't call myself a vegan. Um, I just generally call myself plant-based, but he was the one that really inspired me to focus more on adding good things mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at it as eliminating different things. Right, right, right. I think that's so important. Well, you you have just a wealth of information in your story there. And you know, the first thing to note, I think how your coworkers helped you create an environment that supported what you wanted to do which is so helpful because our environment really does significantly influence our day-to-day -day choices. Uh, and the, the next thing that you said that really struck me was how people really, as a first line for medication, reach towards pills. Mm -hmm. And I've had this discussion with um, many people and people think pills are easier and it really doesn't ever take care of the problem right? It may, may manage it, but it doesn't take care. And, you know, my bias is that why wouldn't you want to change the way you eat to change your health? And, you know, that's my own um, inability to really understand the mindset of somebody who wants to take a pill instead, but that is the reality that some people would really rather take a pill. So um, anyways, but your journey has been for many years now and 2017, I agree, you know, that, that book of Dr. Greger adding What's good um, is also such an important thing for us to, to remember. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so yeah, you know, and, and just one last thing, and I'll turn it back over to you. You know, I think sometimes I forget that, you know, what I'm doing is also by eating plants is also motivated in part by, you know, animal rights issues and environmental issues. And those are equally as important. Uh, and, you know, if we can incorporate ways, whether it be, you know, green, like you did, like how you started your journey um, in other ways besides eating, then, then anything we do can help in, in all ways, can help us individually and as, 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 a, as a world. So, yes, yeah, so thank you for that reminder. Um, anyway, so, so tell us now, you know, you, can, you say you don't consider yourself vegan, but, and that you're incorporating things, um, you know, as advised by Dr. Greger, give us an idea of what you eat in a day and how you came upon your concept of your Instagram page and what you what you highlight? Yeah, um, well, I definitely, um, you know, I would say I eat probably 90 to 95% vegan. Um, and I do try to stick to mostly plant-based um, as opposed to vegan junk food the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. I've also read a lot of Dr. Furman's books and I like how he talks about being 90 to 95% um, you know, eating the good things and then, you know, having the wiggle room for the five to 10% of whatever one chooses, whether they choose to have anything. Now for me, that five to 10% won't be a steak, um, but it might be, um, you know, ice cream or pizza sometime, whether that's a vegan one alternative or just a regular one, it just kind of depends. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, on a typical day, I am 
uh, lucky enough to work from home uh, most days of the week. And so that is part of what inspired my Instagram too, is I wanted to get a little more inspired. I knew I had more time to prepare fresh things. I had access to my uh, food processor and the blender and the oven. Um, when I was working in the office, I was eating more of like bringing a lot of fruit in, eating kind of a vegan um, miso ramen soup. Actually, McDougal makes a really good one um, that I would eat almost every day or, you know, get it like a frozen um, Amy's or a bird's eye kind of thing. So not that those were bad, but I just thought I'm home now. I have the opportunity to really enjoy this. And I've always been a very visual person. I love just looking at pictures that I find colorful and, and pretty. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me, let me try this. And um, I would say in an average day, I kind of find nature. I'm an intermittent faster. I've never been someone who wakes up and wants to eat right away. Mm -hmm. I um, wake up and I have coffee. Uh, I do make mostly decaf. Uh, and I get an organic water filtered decaf because I think anything that you have a lot of, you really should get the best quality possible. Definitely. You know, some of the um, decaffeinating processes in like a a Folgers or a Maxwell house are not very healthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, I like to drink quite a lot of coffee and I don't need that much caffeine. So I do a blend and then around 10, 11, just whenever I do start to get hungry, just depending on the day, I might make a smoothie bowl with just using bananas and sometimes some greens and topping with fruit. I'm big into whatever's in season. Um, and that is not only usually a little healthier, but it's also more affordable. You know, when I see what's on sale that week, that tells me that is what is uh, locally in season. Mm -hmm. And again, that's helpful all around. You know, we're supporting the crops that are supposed to be eaten during that time of year and we're saving money in our wallets. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I will make a, um, potato bowl if I want something a little more savory and that can just be any kind of potatoes sauteed in the skillet I always try to add some greens um, and then onions mushrooms tomatoes asparagus just kind of whatever I have on hand and again just depends if I want something cold and sweet or something hot and savory that day um, I'm not a big believer that you have to eat three meals and snacks. I kind of just let my hunger be my guide. Um, I might have one really big meal around 12 or one, and then the rest of the day just eat more, of, you know, some nuts or some fruit. Um, I'm a big fan of doing a uh, baked potato with salsa and guacamole for dinner too. That's always an easy one. Right. Um, good too. Yeah. 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 Uh, but as you've seen from my Instagram too, I do experiment a lot. I like to make my own sushi. Mm -hmm. um, I, I make wraps, I make salads. I love to do salads with fruit and nuts on them and have it a little bit more sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and I do some savory ones too. Um, I try to not have a lot of fake meat. Uh, I do a lot of uh, tofu and tempeh. My husband is a big griller and so he'll grill me some tempeh um, with some, you know, asparagus. We'll grill portobellos, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I do uh, have my staples, but then I, I like to try new things too. Right. right. No, definitely. I know on your page, you have, you know, pancakes that you've made, brownies, just, you know, things that you wouldn't think would be plant-based, but are. Yeah. Um, so before we go further, then, if you wouldn't mind, then telling us about your cotton candy and ice cream and how you came up with that idea and just let people know what's included because it really does taste like cotton candy. Yeah, yeah. So um, my husband and I, it's just the two of us and a dog at home. And so we will get, we're in Florida and we'll get a big watermelon and there's just only so much space <laughs> to right. put all this watermelon so I cut up a few Tupperwares full, put it in the refrigerator, and then whatever's left over, I will individually freeze in bags um, enough for a serving. 
And then when I go to make a smoothie or whatnot, I'll sometimes use it. Well, um, I'm such a fan of making nice cream, which a lot of people know is really just basically frozen bananas blended up to taste like ice cream. Mm -hmm. So I was going to make some with a uh, watermelon and I put I think half of a banana. It was probably about a cup and a half of watermelon and half of a banana. And I blended it in the food processor. Um, I added just a little bit of almond milk or coconut water, you know, just enough to kind of get it going. And um, I just noticed it tasted just like cotton candy. And it was amazing to me. It was just sweet, but it had that kind of distinct cotton candy flavor. And color. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. And the color is that right. beautiful light pink. Mm -hmm. And even if you want to be a little more fun, I like to add chia seeds to a lot of things. I love to make sure I get enough fiber mm -hmm. and the chia seeds just look like watermelon seeds. So it's yeah, just kind of a cute play on the idea of the watermelon right. still. Right, right. Huh. Well, I made it without the coconut water or the nut milk and just made it with um, the bananas, the watermelon. And I put a little bit of al uh, not almond, vanilla powder um, mm -hmm. and really, really good. So uh, you know, my daughter was a little bit skeptical. How can watermelon taste like cotton candy? And her first bite, she said, this is cotton candy. It, it is right. So, yeah. So thank you for that. Um, and you know, I'm excited to try other things that you have there, other, other creations that you make. Um, as I said to somebody else before, when I create things, it takes me a, a lot of tries and I do a lot of tasting. So I like to kind of use other people's creativity and just copy because it's quicker that way for me. And I get the, what I'm looking for a lot, a lot more easily. So thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, I know you talked about your coworkers and how supportive they were. Tell me about, you say it's, it's, it's just you and your husband at home. Is he, is he plant-based mostly? What about friends, other family? Uh, what do you notice in your, your circles? He is absolutely not plant-based. Um, when we met, you know, I had been vegetarian for quite a while and, um, he is definitely, I would say he eats a lot healthier than what you would probably say is the standard American diet. Mm -hmm. Um, he is kind of a bowl of oatmeal with fruit with blueberries on top every single day for breakfast. He adds cinnamon. So he's kind of being a nutritarian without even realizing it. He puts chia seeds in there. And then he'll eat cantaloupe, pineapple, watermelon, uh, kind of whatever we have that week. And then for lunch, he does um, a deli meat sandwich uh, with uh, like a seed bread and carrots and nuts. And then dinner, he'll grill something. Uh, so he is definitely not really open to the idea of giving up meat. His palate is a bit more limited than mine is, but, um, you know, I kind of picked my battles. I, I did get him to start putting spinach on his sandwiches instead of just iceberg lettuce. And I'm a big proponent of better is always better progress, not perfection. Absolutely. So, right, right. Yeah. No, it sounds like you've made a significant influence in what he's eating from what you've described already. So I think that's great. Um, and you're able to still stick with what you want to eat, even mm -hmm. though he's not eating completely as you are. And you know, that, that's great too. Um, what about, but what about other family, you know, siblings, cousins, friends, things like that? How, how do they, how does that influence you? How have you influenced them? Yeah, well, I will say my little French bulldog, Roxy, <laughs> she, he eats vegan dog food. <laughs> and, uh, and we do feed her um, just carrots and blueberries as treats. We don't get her the raw hides or any of that stuff mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the weird mystery meat in it. Right. right. And, and she does really well. Uh, Frenchies are known for health problems and we've been very lucky. She's just turned six and hasn't had any issues. And I do right. think a lot of that is because of her diet. Right. Um, and I have, uh, you know, a lot of friends who are plant-based surprisingly, and then some that aren't, um, 
I'm getting together with a bunch of girlfriends in Memorial Day weekend for kind of our annual get together. And we have an Airbnb and they've all said, oh, we would love it if you would cook some of those meals that we see the pictures of. Yeah, wow. Um, and I have a really close friend who is, is completely vegan um, and, you know, we'll share pictures. And if we see a new product that comes out that we want to try, we'll send the link to each other. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, I really love that too, is I think um, sometimes the message can get lost when people are a little too militant about it. Mm -hmm. And I say, if you want to eat plant-based 50% of the time, or, you know, just some people going from three meals a day that include meat and dairy to two meals a day and one that's plant-based. I mean, that's a 30% improvement oh my gosh. Right. That's a win all around. So yeah. there's, yeah. there's no step to me that's too small and making a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, it, it's all true. Um, what have you noticed? I guess I haven't asked you this about your own, you know, since you have been eating in a very healthful way for a number of years, what have you noticed, if anything, about your own personal health as a result of this? Yeah, um, I noticed right away uh, my GI system is a lot happier when I get a lot of fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, that had always been kind of an issue for me, um, not maybe not getting enough fiber, not feeling really regular um, my whole life. Uh, and when I eat more plants, that definitely clears up. I do notice the more I stick to a 100% plant-based diet with a lot of fiber, um, especially getting a lot of the seeds and a lot of the greens, mm -hmm. um, that that helps the most. Um, and I would say too, you know, for any women listening, uh, when it's that time of the month, uh, when I've been doing very well plant-based and not having dairy, mm -hmm. I noticed that I have significantly uh, less bleeding and less cramps. So, you know, maybe that's a little too much information, but medically, you know, that is what happens. And right. I think that just goes to show how much the dairy does influence hormones. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. My yeah. mother is a breast cancer survivor. So eliminating dairy, that's definitely a huge motivator um, because I do have that family history. Right, um, right, right. And uh, the effects I see from not having it show me that it definitely seems to affect my body quite a right. bit. Definitely. Well, as I'm sure, you know, being in the health field, not only are, you know, our dairy supplies tainted by hormones that are given to the animals to help them produce more milk, but milk itself has something called insulin like growth hormone that does promote cell growth of any type, including tumors. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of a, you know, like a double whammy there with, with the dairy in particular. So uh, yes, I guess, you know, my personal advice, I don't know if you would agree, but if anybody's out there who's trying to move away from the standard American diet, I would say dairy would probably be, you know, the biggest offender of a lot of ailments that people experience. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know what, what you see uh, in your field or in your family, um, if, if that supports that as well, but that's just my own personal belief. Oh yeah, I agree. I feel like, um, somebody who completely gets rid of dairy and maybe they just choose that they want to have a piece of salmon or whatever, when they go out to dinner once a, or twice a month, mm -hmm. I think they're better off than maybe somebody who is um, fully vegetarian, but is eating dairy every single day or multiple times a day. Right, right, right. And um, yeah. people are so scared to eat soy and all it's, it's just the media and the, uh, and just the different companies promoting this, this false rumor that soy isn't healthy or that it promotes hormonal imbalances mm -hmm. or cancers. And really all of the research seems to point to the exact opposite. Right. So right. I'm a big fan of getting my daily serving of beans and through a, a form of soy. Right, right. No, definitely. And I think that part of that misinformation stems from the fact that soy contains estrogens, but you know, people don't take the time to look one step further. It's a different type of estrogen than what is stimulating tumor growth in our bodies. It's a type of estrogen that actually can be protective against that same growth. So 
uh, yeah, not all estrogens are the same, and um, that that's where you know part of the 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 problem in uh, advocating against soy lies is um, it's just mis to me it's misinformation. So yeah. Um, anyways, what what do you do? And you mentioned going out to eat. What do you do, or how do you eat when you're out? Is it different than when you're home? Um, do you look for places that are more plant-based? Do you modify what you eat? You know, do you incorporate more oil or sugar because it's hard to avoid those when you're out? Just if you just mind going into that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I really anymore, and I think a lot of it has changed with with everything with COVID. Mm -hmm. I just really don't find going out to eat to be a great pleasure anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I used to love to go out to dinner and have wine and a steak and a baked potato. I am also, um, a, I live an alcohol-free lifestyle for many years now. And um, that was for, for a lot of reasons, not just health reasons. Um, you know, I'm a woman in recovery. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, going out to dinner just doesn't hold the same appeal. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be drinking the wine. I'm, I'm going to be struggling to find something on the menu. So it's just not that fun. Um, now, luckily, there are more and more plant-based restaurants and options in most restaurants. I would say the town that I personally live in is very limited. Um, there's one vegan restaurant, and it is one of the... Um, one of those kind of smaller chains where they have a lot of uh, different uh, Asian foods. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I find in my town, some chains that in other cities actually have a plant-based option don't even have them here. Mm -hmm. So we really don't do a lot of eating out. I might grab a rice and bean bowl at Chipotle here and there. Um, now, in the actual city of Orlando, which I'm in a, a suburb of that or another another city close by, um, there's actually quite a few nice vegan restaurants and I've tried them out with, with different uh, plant-based friends. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a really great steakhouse that has a, a fixed vegan menu and I've had a few amazing meals there. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely easier uh, mm -hmm. these days, I think to find options, yes. uh, but I don't necessarily seek them out that much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, my idea of a fun day is more like picking blueberries or picking peaches as opposed to just sitting in a restaurant, but a lot of people right. do enjoy eating out and, and there are options for them too. Right. Well, I like you, as I progressed in my plant-based journey have found restaurants to be less and less appealing for a multitude of reasons, even though the vegan options are more than they were, so too is the inclusion of oil and sugars and flours in a way that I don't eat at home. And so I end up not feeling as well when I'm eating out and it's just easier to eat at home. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned the, the you know, abstinence from alcohol. There is a mnemonic um, that's becoming more and more popular now. Sofas, I don't know if you've heard it, that's sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt-free. And this is not just for people in the plant-based world, but for anybody recognizing that these are, you know, addictive, highly palatable substances that are bad for us and that nobody really needs to be eating any of them, you know, whether it be zero or at least limiting them, you know, it's, it's, it's all something that we, um, you know, is a good thing for us to work towards. So, you know, I don't drink alcohol either um, because, you know, I, I said to my daughter kind of as a lesson to her as something that she could say is if I feel good now, why would I want to ingest something that's going to make me feel different than what I already feel? So anyways, I, you know, I think that's great uh, that you're alcohol free. And I think it's great that you're eating more at home too, because it's you're better for all the reasons that you started being plant-based in terms of being, you know, for the planet and for animals, that's, that supports that as well. So, you know, no offense to anybody out in the restaurant industry out there, but you know, I'm, I'm more pro pro eat at home. So I think that's good. Um, what about batch cooking then? Since you do eat mostly at home, I know for me, that's been something that's made this process easier. Do you batch cook? Um, and if so, what do you make? And what do you always have in your refrigerator? You know, I have tried and tried to meal prep and batch cook. Mm -hmm. And do you know, I 
hate it with a passion. <laughs> There's nothing I hate more than eating the same thing two days in a row. <laughs> Unless it's something I probably shouldn't be eating. But I, I did say to myself, you know, what am I doing here? Because I was finding I would be throwing away some produce, which I hate to do. Mm -hmm. um, or I would have a long day and I just felt exhausted. I don't want to have to cook something, but I didn't want to heat something up. Mm -hmm. um, so what I started doing that's been extremely helpful is actually batch prepping. So when I get home, um, I have, I go to Aldi every week. Uh, it's my favorite place to buy affordable produce and also the, the kitchen staples. So the pantry, I'm, I'm not a huge grain person. Um, we always have oats because my husband eats that, but I'll have a bag of brown rice that lasts me three years. Um, oh boy. I'm just not great on the grains. I'm more of a, a potato person for my starches. Mm -hmm. um, but I always have the cans of the black beans, the organic black beans, organic uh, kidney beans, white beans, garbanzos, everything. So I have a good assortment. I'll have some refried beans. Um, and if I make like a big salad that's more of a Mexican style, I'll just put a scoop of those right on top. Mm -hmm. But um, in the fridge, I do a lot of produce, always have a big bag of organic kale, spinach, arugula, got tomatoes, whatever fruits in season, always berries. Uh, I definitely try to do the uh, G-bombs, so the mm -hmm. greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and nuts. Mm -hmm. um, it's Dr. Furman. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to do the daily dozen for a while and that felt a little overwhelming, especially because I don't always have an appetite for grains, mm -hmm. but uh, the G bombs seem to be a little more manageable. So mm -hmm. always mushrooms in the fridge, but yeah, I'll get home from the grocery store and I'll rinse the asparagus and cut it into saute sized pieces or I'll take the uh, the whole mushrooms and chop them up. I'll dice the onion. I'll dice the red and green and yellow bell peppers. And that way, you know, the next morning, if I decide I want a potato breakfast, then I kind of go, well, what theme do I want? If I feel more Italian, I might throw some fresh basil from my garden, some asparagus, some tomatoes, some garlic. Mm -hmm. um, if I want more of a southwestern feel I'll put in some onions and some bell peppers but having it all already chopped up just makes cooking so much faster mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. throw it all into one skillet and you're done um, and then I'm not wasting anything because even if I'm tired it's already cut up there's really not a whole lot to do right right no absolutely so the way you describe it is actually what I I call that batch cooking. So I guess I, I don't really cook that much that I bit, you know, I, I have all that stuff. I do batch prepare potatoes because I find the potatoes, once they've been roasted and then reheated in the air fryer or microwave or oven taste better to me. So, but that's the extent of my batch cooking really too, is, is making the, you know, I do oat groats and have that in the refrigerator and then you just have to heat them up, but you know, or a lot of cut up vegetables. Um, I wanted just to, to touch on one thing you said about Dr. Greger's, um, you know, I read his books, How Not to Die, How Not to Diet. I downloaded the app and for the Daily Dozen. And, you know, the, I think it's a great concept for me. It was too much food. I couldn't really check all the boxes in a day. Um, you know, my husband, who's six foot, um, could, but I couldn't. I'm, you know, not even five, two. It was just too much. So probably, you know, maybe that could be tweaked a little bit because it, you know, anyways, it didn't work for me, um, even yeah. though it's a great concept. So I agree with, you know, the, the G-bombs is, is something um, much easier to incorporate in my day as well. So. Yeah. And, and Dr. Berman actually recommends a pound of salad and a pound of cooked or steamed vegetables yes. a day. Yes. And I just, I don't even look at that. I just, you know, if I haven't gotten enough greens in, in a day, I can tell. And so at the end of the day, I might just make a kale and spinach smoothie. Yeah. You posted that once. I saw yeah. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not measuring anything. I'm not really counting anything. It's just more of a goal of, uh, of trying to get the good stuff in. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's great. 
So what about, it sounds like your, your diet is very well balanced and full of all the you know, good things. What about supplements? Do you take any? And what are your thoughts on those? Um, I do think that there is, of course, a whole market for supplements. Um, people think that a supplement is going to change their life. And unless they're severely nutrient deficient, it probably won't. Mm-hmm. But I do take a vegan omega supplement daily. The dose is two capsules. I just take one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I take a B12 every day. I take uh, that daily just because it's easier than trying to remember if I took it that week. Um, I also take a magnesium and that's it. Um, I'm in Florida. I get a lot of natural vitamin D. Uh, I get a lot of uh, vitamin C, always eating citrus. I think every single day I eat citrus and I have lemon juice every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, I consider this a supplement I make, and I've posted them on my page, but I make an immunity shot. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I sprout broccoli seeds, which is intimidating. If you've never done it, if you do it, you know, it's super, super easy. There's nothing to it. You cannot mess them up. I but, saw your pictures. It does look, I yeah. mean, it's fascinating. It's so easy. And the first time you make them, you're going, oh, this is actually growing. How cool. Mm -hmm. Um, So I make broccoli seeds once a week. And then in the fridge, I have the prepared shots. And then when I finish them, I start a new batch. So Mm -hmm. the uh, shot that I make is just a mason jar of the broccoli sprouts that have grown. Mm -hmm. And then about 10 ounces of lemon juice, 25 ounces of water, chia seeds, uh, organic turmeric powder, a little bit of pepper to make the turmeric absorb better, Mm -hmm. uh, some ginger, and then uh, whatever else I feel like throwing in that week. I did blueberries this week. Sometimes I put in frozen pineapple. You want a little bit of sweetness. Um, Mm -hmm. They're not delicious, but broccoli sprouts, they contain the sulforamine, I believe Mm -hmm. is the, uh, the component which is, um, I guess, one of the top anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory type foods that you can even get anywhere. So between that, the turmeric, the vitamin C from the lemon juice, I just feel like it's my um, my super shot. You know, I'm getting right, my anti-cancer right. and my anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. So I, I do one of those every day um, right. along with the, the few little supplements I take. It sounds amazing. Um, and for those intimidated about sprouting, number one, I would say check out Ashley's um, Instagram page, but also, you know, I've seen them more and more in the grocery store now, broccoli sprouts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I put them on salads. I think the sprouts by themselves, um, you know, don't have that much of a taste, um, mm-hmm. certainly not a bad taste. And so, you know, why not? Right. Yeah. And I do it at home only because um, doing it every single week. Uh, it's just, they're so expensive at the they store. They are very expensive. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think the last time I bought them, they were probably five or $6 a they cart. Are. They're probably more now. They are. They're, you know, like $6 a little for a little. Yeah. 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 And um, I get a bag of the seeds for like $11 on Amazon. Oh, and interesting. Okay. The seeds, I mean, they'll last me months making the equivalent of a carton every single day so, oh, okay. or every single okay. week. Well, I'm going to do that now. I didn't know. So Amazon, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Broccoli sprout seeds. Is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Broccoli, sprout, Broccoli seeds. sprout seeds. And you can get, I've tried radish. There's, there's definitely all kinds. I would like to get some more mason jars and mm-hmm. kind of up the sprouts so I can add more to salads and, and that kind of thing too. Right. 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 And does your husband drink the shots? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you can sneak a few sprouts in maybe in his okay. yeah. that that'd be the first step. Yeah. Um, anyways, that it sounds good to me. So um, I don't know if there's anything more that um, you know, if somebody were listening to this who were trying to decide for themselves, should I be, should I try this or not? If you have any advice, you know, why, why should somebody try to incorporate more plants, should become more plant-based and what would be the the biggest benefits that you would tell them? How would you sell this to somebody? Yeah, um, 
I would say, first of all, um, ditch the labels. You don't have to call yourself a vegan. You don't have to swear off anything forever. Um, people say, but what about a steak on my birthday? Or what about bacon? And, you know, you, you don't have to say no to anything. It's just more about saying yes to more healthy foods. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's, there's no change that's too small. Um, that it won't be good for you, for the planet, for animals. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many benefits though. You know, your skin looks better. You just feel, for me, the more plants I eat and the less animal products, not only does my body feel lighter, but my soul does. Mm -hmm. I think it's a choice that nobody can feel bad about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's good for your wallet. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, food prices are just crazy but mm -hmm. beans are still 99 cents for a can and they're organic and I can get two or three servings out of the can and there's not that many things that you can say you can eat that that you can do a 50 cent serving no, of. not at all um, right yes I, I wrote down all of the things that you summarized because they're so helpful um, and that last point is something really that people don't recognize because they say it is more expensive to eat this way because of all the produce but you're not eating produce exclusively and you're right. The other things are so cheap. Oh yeah. I mean, we spend probably 60 to $70 at Aldi every week. And mm -hmm. that's mostly what I'm eating. And then another 60 or 70 at the other grocery store. And most of that is my husband's meat. So I would venture to say if you were really big on rice and beans too, you mm -hmm. could probably feed two adults for, for sure, 50 to hundred dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's great. And rice and beans are my favorite. And that's probably for me, what transitioning was the easiest thing to make plant-based because it was so similar to begin with. Anyways, you just had to take out some of the, you know, whatever the, the, the lard that you cooked with, or, you know, some yeah. of that chicken. So to me that, you know, you mentioned the Chipotle, the Mexican, the rice and beans, that was just, that was the cuisine that was easiest to, yeah. to adapt and something I still use regularly. So that's something I would say too, for people that do dine out a lot, um, more of a cultural dining experience, you'll always have more options. Definitely. Indian food, the half the menu is naturally vegetarian, right? You know, Mexican food, Italian food, you can always find options. And when I do go someplace like that, I kind of try to say, okay, what tastes good? And then can I make this healthier? So, you know, if you're getting spaghetti with marinara sauce, maybe add broccoli. And even if you're choosing not to have something totally plant-based and you're getting an Alfredo, well, how about getting broccoli and mushrooms instead of chicken? And then you still get maybe the flavor you want, but boost the fiber, boost the antioxidants and the vegetables. So right. Right. There's always a swap you can make. Mm -hmm. The more I um, the more I stay on this path, I find some stuff that I used to think I would always miss. If I have a slice of pizza, sometimes I'm like, it, you know, it's okay, but it's just not amazing. There's there's nothing you're really missing. No, right. And again, that highlights what a lot of people point out is that your palate changes over time, and the things you think you're going to miss, you don't because you're now used to feeding your body in a healthful way. And, and those other things, you know, just don't have the same appeal. So yeah. I agree with that. Yes. Anyways, well, you know, I thank you for giving up again, your, your time, particularly your lunch time to come and talk to us today. But one thing before we go, something that's suggested to me is something that could be fun to do is kind of like have a rapid fire, um, you know, 10 questions at the end. So I have to get my list because I don't remember what they are that I wrote. Um, but just kind of like, you know, off the top of your head, um, how you would answer. And they're, they're meant to be just quick and, you know, not to be expounded upon. But anyways, okay. So favorite non-starchy vegetable. Asparagus. Yeah, you mentioned that already, right? Favorite <laughs> starchy vegetable. Sweet potato. Yeah, okay. Me too. Favorite fruit. Blueberries. Mm -hmm. Vegetables for breakfast, yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Something you eat almost every day. Berries every day. Mm -hmm. 
favorite plant-based substitute for something you used to eat that was not plant-based? If I'm being a little bad, the Gardein Ultimate Chicken Tender thing, it's like a patty. It's, I've had it. It's yeah. an indulgence and it's good. <laughs> <laughs> something you eat now that you never thought you would eat. Uh, tempeh. I actually just tried that for the first time this year. It's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. um, favorite seasoning? Garlic or fresh herbs. One kitchen appliance that you couldn't live without? The yeah, food processor. Mm -hmm. One thing about you that we'd find surprising that you didn't already reveal to us today? Oh my goodness, this is the <laughs> hardest one. Um... <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything, but Sorry. oh, here I'll give you one. I am a uh, bar fanatic. I go to bar classes uh, three, sometimes four times a week. I really love them. Great! Wow, you must be in good shape. Then those are hard. So we are. <laughs> anyways, well, good. Well, thank you for for sharing that and um, for your time. And I look forward to seeing what you have to post again that I can copy. Uh, and I'll be having my cotton candy and ice cream later today. So I'll be thinking of you then as well. I might so, have to do some of that too. Thank yeah. you so much for having Good. me. Good. Yes. And I'll post this on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, and I, I'm sure that, you know, we've all learned a lot from, from what you've had to share and for your journey. And again, thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.